Hey, what's up guys? Today, I want to talk to you about my Stanford experience. So I just recently graduated from Stanford last year. And well, I want to talk about it because I have a lot of thoughts about Stanford. And the reason I want to talk about it is because, I mean, if you're watching this on YouTube, I'm sure you know, there's a lot of videos about, you know, my Stanford experience, what to expect at Stanford, yada, 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 all this stuff. But the thing is, from at least from what I've seen, a lot of those videos are mainly made from a point of view of freshmen who are just sort of like, you know, just getting used to Stanford, sort of, and they just, they sort of just have these, like, expectations, and they're, they have these, uh, rose-colored glasses of what to expect from Stanford. So it might not always be the most accurate point of view, maybe. So as someone who has gone through all, all the years of Stanford and graduated with a degree, figured, um, I'm going to give my thoughts because they're just as valid as anyone else's. So yeah, I'm, I'm going to give my thoughts on sort of two things, the academic and social part of Stanford. So the academic part will be this video and... I'll just split off the second part to be the social part of Stanford. So, yeah, let's get into it. So, I mean, before we start, I guess let me give you guys some context, a little bit about myself so that you know just where I'm coming from and why, you know, how I went into Stanford. So, I'm from New York, actually. So, I never even, like, really heard of Stanford. I mean, I heard of Stanford. It's the school that Gabriella went to in High School Musical. So I had heard of Stanford, but I actually didn't know that like Stanford was this like really good school. So maybe that's like me being stupid, but I just, you know, I was, I'm come, I'm from New York City, Brooklyn actually. So I just thought, you know, oh, the good schools are the Ivy Leagues and whatever. And I never really thought that Stanford was like in that tier. Maybe that's just, I just didn't spend enough time on College Confidential. I just, I didn't know that. So I didn't really think about going to Stanford. And also it's like in California. So I never really got to visit it or know anyone who went there. So I never really thought about Stanford until my senior year when my college counselor was like, hey, uh, you should apply to Stanford for various reasons. And I was like, yeah, sounds cool. And I didn't want to be in New York anymore because uh, I mean, I was just tired of living with my parents, you know, I was 17, every teenager goes through that thing where they don't want to live with their parents anymore. And I was at that point, and weather seemed nice, and Stanford was a really good school after I did my research. So I was like, yep, I'm gonna do it. I applied early, and I got in, and I didn't even apply to any other colleges. I just got in, never visited Stanford ever in my life, just was like, yep, I'm gonna go there. And I accepted and yeah, that was sort of that. I didn't even, so I didn't visit Stanford until after I got accepted. I visited it once in February. And then they have this sort of admin weekend where everyone who gets into Stanford can go to campus and sort of check it out. And, you know, they make it seem really cool and nice. So you want to go there. And that was in April. But the thing is, I actually didn't go there because I had a track meet. I was on track and field at the time. And there was this really important track meet. So I didn't go there. I went to track meet instead. So I sort of went into Stanford uh, really cold compared to some other people. So that's that. Uh, but even though I sort of went in cold and I didn't know about Stanford until senior year, I still had uh, certain expectations going to Stanford. So, yeah, I mean, I wanted to study English and CS, which are sort of two different things, but I was really in English and CS and Stanford. Seemed to have a really good CS program, really good English program, surprisingly. May not be the first thing that it's known for, but it does seem to have a really good English program. So I was like, yeah, I'm going to go there for that. And also it just seemed like fun, right? I'm sure uh, a lot of people have, think like, oh yeah, it's California. It's got good weather. It's fun, you know? So I also had that expectation. And I think these expectations sort of do play into like how you perceive Stanford because... I did sort of have lofty expectations going to Stanford, expecting that it would be like really fun and really awesome academically and everyone would be super nice and all this, all these sort of 
ideas in my mind about what Stanford was going to be like. And I never even like really stepped foot on campus or heard about it until like my senior year. Right. So there was that. And I think whether or not that is sort of like unfair to Stanford for them to have to like meet these like lofty expectations. But I mean, kids are kids, you know, 18 year old kids will have expectations and they're impressionable. So whether or not that's fair, that's what happened. And I definitely think that affected how I perceive Stanford after I realized what it was actually like. So yeah, there's that. So yeah, I did, I did have these expectations going in and I did expect Stanford to be awesome socially and academically. So when you get to Stanford, there is, and I'm going to strictly speak academically and I'll put the like social and everything else video up after this, but strictly academically, I think there are relatively like few, relatively little guidance slash restrictions put on you. Actually, that's not true. I think there's relatively little guidance, but there are certain restrictions placed on you as a freshman. So as a freshman going in, you'll have your pre-major advisor, which is sort of a new thing. They started my freshman year, which is basically when you go into Stanford, you don't have a, you haven't chosen a degree yet. So normally before this program, you wouldn't have an advisor in the department that you didn't choose a degree for yet. But my year base started what was called the pre-major advisor. And I think they call it something else now. We probably call it like the Stanford guide or something, I think. But my year was called the pre-major advisor. And basically what this was, was just some faculty member on campus who was like in a field that you were interested in, that you like filled out on the form after you got in. And he basically was, you know, giving you advice on like what to do your freshman year basically up until the point you chose your uh, major. And the deadline to choose your major was the last, like, second of sophomore year. So you could be with this pre-major advisor for two years if uh, you, you know, didn't know what to major in. And, yeah, I do think that's, like, a good thing, that they don't sort of force you to um, choose a major super early. Be so... Uh, you can wait until like sophomore year to make that decision, which I think is good because if you want to make that decision earlier, you can. And there's lots of people who make that decision earlier and get your sort of real, not re like re sort of get your uh, advisor in that department. Or if you're not sure, you can wait it out and that's fine too. So I think that is a good thing. But the sort of not good thing, I guess, is this PMA or whatever they call it now, Stanford Guide is not that helpful I think or at least for me it really wasn't that helpful because um he's he's like because uh you don't haven't chosen your like field yet your major your thing that you're going to study the pre-major advisor sort of doesn't like have anything to like build off of you're basically just for me at least I was basically just talking to him like once a quarter and not really getting too much out of it, in my opinion. So yeah, I was, yeah, I had my pre-major advisor and basically I was sort of torn between studying CS or English and my pre-major advisor, we basically just had like lunch once a quarter and he was like, yep, yeah, just do what you want, figure it out sort of, which is not super helpful, I guess which, you know, does give you a lot of agency to choose, like, what you want to do. But also, as someone just coming into Stanford, it's not super helpful, like I said. So there's that. And yeah, I sort of neglected to say Stanford runs on a quarter system. So that means most colleges run on the semester system where they have a class every, or one sort of, you take new classes every 15 weeks. So you have in normal college, you have two 15 week semesters at Stanford. You have 10 or 10 at Stanford. You have three 10 week quarters. So you sort of take 33% more classes, which are 33% shorter. Uh, honestly, I don't really like it because the quarter system, it just is, it, it goes by really quickly. And then you're taking midterms like week three of the 10 week quarter, like th three weeks into, 
into starting a class, you're taking a midterm. So you're basically thinking about the midterm and studying from week two. Like you, we barely just started the class and I'm already thinking about a midterm, which is not that fun. And also I think it does like Stanford says like, oh, like we still cover the same amount of material that a semester normally would. But I mean, I just don't think that's true. I think you ha you just don't have the same amount of time, so you have to give up something. And part of what they give up is like covering something maybe in more detail or more depth or learning more about it. So I am not a huge fan of the quarter system myself. I mean, I know people who are because it lets them take more classes and like if a class is bad, you get over it quickly. But then it's also like if a class is good, it ends quickly. I will say like a good thing about the quarter system is that it makes the year go by or it makes it really makes the classes and you feel like really like snappy. I think part of it is because it's like an in interval, like with like a 10 week thing, you can sort of count it as like progressions of like 10%. So you're like, Oh, I'm like 10% done with this quarter, which is nice, but I don't think it like outweighs the cons I sort of mentioned just now of quarter system. So that's the quarter system. Yeah. And yeah, so freshman year, didn't really get that much guidance from my PMA. And they sort of do like restrict you. Uh, it's Stanford is sort of like restrictive. Because there are some colleges like, I don't know, like Columbia, which is like super restrictive on like, the classes you take, you have to like take their core. And then there are colleges like Amherst, where like, basically it doesn't really fucking matter. Uh, except for your major. I think Stanford's pretty... I don't think they're that punitive, like, that restrictive just with general classes, but I do think, at least for me, the major requirements are pretty restrictive, and that sort of forced what classes I chose freshman year. So uh, pretty early on, I didn't declare until, like, my sophomore year, but pretty early on, I was like, I'm going to be a CS major, so let me get cracking on these, like, CS classes. And for CS, a lot of the classes you need to take are requirements for the School of Engineering. But I just felt like I didn't need to take. So like freshman year, I was taking like physics, I was taking math, calculus. And I was like, I mean, I sort of get why they were making us take those classes because it's like engineering, blah, blah, blah. You got to know physics if you want to be an engineer. At the same time, it was like, I don't need to know like torque for like... <laughs> being a CS major. And also those classes were like super painful for me to take and I did not do well in physics and those things. So that was not great. And then, yeah, that was not great having to take those classes that basically were a requirement and I didn't really see the point of. And then also for me, like uh, there was like some personal stuff going on in my life. Uh, freshman winter quarter, so that's the second quarter. And it was just really not great to be at Stanford at that time because the classes I felt were just like sort of like I was just being like why am I taking these classes that I feel like are not well taught not like necessary for me and I'll go into more detail about the specific classes later but I, that was just how I felt and it was just not a good time <laughs> yeah so that was my freshman year I'll go into the details more of classes later i guess actually let me just do that now so i don't know some standout classes i took from freshman year whether for better or for worse uh cs 107 is one of them so that's the systems level course at stanford and basically you're learning about os level shit your os level stuff um so you're learning about like memory you're learning c basically and like how to like manipulate the computer on like a lower level and I really did not like this class <laughs> because uh, I just felt like it was just that poorly taught like it was so confusing the way they taught it it was just like it was it was just like a lot of like confusing diagrams and like not that well explained like stuff and it was just sort of left me like lost and the way they like The way they like for like had lectures was also not helpful because like 
uh, my professor would like draw these like really complicated diagrams on like her like Microsoft Surface thing. And it was just like super confusing and hard to follow along. In that class, we also had these things called labs. So basically you would go into like this computer cluster in the building they had and you would do some like exercises in person with a, a TA teaching assistant there. And I didn't feel like I learned much from that. That was just basically super painful learning how to like do stuff there. Um, yeah, I just felt like they didn't give us that much guidance. So 107, not a great experience. And that was winter quarter when I was like really having a hard time in my personal life. So it really did not help that this class was like making me feel the pain. And the assignments too were like just so uh, not a good time. Just not a good time. Um, this is a funny story, like, this is not that related, but like freshman year, I remember there was this one assignment that called binary bomb that we were supposed to do. And like the day before it was due, I hadn't started it. And I was in lab and the guy next to me, he's like, oh, do you know how to like do number four on like the assignment? And I'm like, bro, I haven't started it. And he just looks at me with like the biggest look of like disgust. Like, how could you not have started it? What's wrong with you? And I feel like that's sort of like the people you'll meet at Stanford. But like I said, I'll cover that in the second part of this video. So yeah, that was that was not that fun. Coming into sophomore year, uh, so I really decided that I didn't want to be at Stanford anymore sophomore year. I just wanted to graduate early. And I did come in with some AP credits. So even though I hadn't gone that hard freshman year in terms of my course load, I was still on track to be able to graduate in three years if I went really hard sophomore and junior slash senior year. And I was like, screw it, I'm gonna do that. So I just went really hard on CS classes, all the required classes and declared CS. And when I declared CS, I did get a CS advisor. So I moved on from my pre-major advisor to my CS advisor. And I literally never spoke to my CS advisor once. Like I applied to be a CS major. They randomly assigned me some person and I literally didn't talk to them once, which, you know, that's partially on me. If I wanted something out of it, I should have maybe gone, talk I should have gone talk to them. But I feel like that's interesting because I bet a lot of people will be like me and not talk to their CS advisors. And CS is such a like huge department, I can understand why maybe they can't talk to everyone. CS is like 33% of Stanford students or something. So it's a huge department. I can understand why they can't talk to everyone. But that's that's what it is. And yeah, let me talk a little bit more about like the CS department, I guess. CS department is huge. There's so many people, so many uh so many grad students and undergrad studying CS. And basically every class you'll take in CS is gonna be a huge lecture with like 100 people. Like if you take English or poli sci or something, you know, every now and you'll, you'll get classes with like 10 people and you can like actually talk in class and interact with the professor. Basically every class in the CS department is like 100 plus, if not 200, if not 300 people in that class. So it's really hard to talk to the professor and it's really hard to like, I don't know, like get that individualized attention that you might get in like an English class or something. Related to that, the uh, CS classes do hold like office hours. So you can like go talk to the TAs about like any problems we're having in class. But like I said, the classes are so huge that like everyone goes to office hours and it's really hard to talk to a TA talk to a TA. So they have this like system set up where like when you go to office hours, you sign up on a queue. And sometimes like it'll take you like 30, 45 minutes, an hour to like them to get to you on the queue, which is like pretty crazy. So that's my experience with the CS department. Um, I'm just going to go into a bit of detail of certain classes I took that stood out to me. I already described 107. And mind you, maybe my perception of these classes are skewed because I went so hard my second and third year to be able to graduate in three, three years. But these are my thoughts. Uh, one class that stands out to me is CS224N. So this is, I should be doing something in Minecraft besides just hopping around. 
uh, CS224N, which is like the uh, a natural language processing class. So basically, teaching computers to read is the gist of it. But that was that. Um, this class was like not great at all for me because the way they taught it was just super, super confusing, which I feel like is the vibe of most CS classes. Like the first two weeks, I sort of got it. I sort of was like able to understand what they were trying to say. And then after like the second week, I was just totally lost. Like they were talking about neural networks, this and that. And like the second you get behind in a CS class at Stanford, you're just like, you're done so. So like I was able to like, I don't know, like piece together the homework and like figure it out like sort of generally. But I like... I can't tell you like one thing that I learned from that class. I couldn't do anything. I can't do anything after taking that class. Like I didn't learn any skills um, from that class. So that's that. I think, yeah, at Stanford, every CS class basically gives you like a lot of starter code. And they basically just ask you to like fill in like a few functions, which I guess makes sense because they're teaching you like the fundamentals of CS rather than how to code. If that makes sense. But at the same time, I feel like that's not good because then I don't learn how to code, which I feel like is important if you're a CS major. So like in CS 224N, they would give us these a lot of like starter code and it would basically just look up some documentation and like learn how to like do these like two functions, which was great made the homework easier but i didn't really learn anything from that actually like even though i'm a cs major some of my favorite classes were english classes like i said i did sort of want to be an english major or study english for a while and there were some like really amazing english classes like to me all the english professors seem really amazing i took like four or five english classes every single one i feel like I did learn something and like I thought about the world differently after taking them, which is definitely not the case I can say for like all CS classes. And it's just, I feel like the CS or the English classes are just like fun, you know, like you get to write, you get to like talk with cool people and the CS or both CS, the English professors are really kind. You can talk to them much more accessible than the CS teachers. So I really like the English classes I took. So I don't know that there's like intro, like big uh, English 90, English 91, which are like the intro fiction writing and nonfiction writing classes, some other classes, but the English classes, I think were really fun. The English department is really strong in my opinion. So take some English classes if you're a CS major. Um, yeah, I'm, let me just close out this section by talking about the general academic vibe of Stanford. Um, so a lot of people I think are really, at least in the CS department, really results and goal oriented. And they're really like driven to like work at like these big tech companies like Google or Facebook, which is like a respectable goal, right? Those are like really prestigious jobs and such. But I think that like singular drive does come at a cost of like, I don't know, like some humanity some like general like chillness because I feel like a lot of Stanford kids are so caught up in the whole like getting internships getting a job thing at like Google or Facebook or Tesla or whatever they're like so caught up in that they become like really boring like not cool people who are also like not that academic like intellectually like stimulated you know they're just like so focused on like okay how can i take this class to like and get an a on it so that i look really good for like my job interview or how can i just get by this class because i don't really care about what's going on there i just want to get this job to be honest that's sort of what i just said like i didn't really learn that much in my cs classes or like gain that much from them so i'm probably just as guilty as these are these guys are but the vibe of the people academically is just like, uh, I don't know, 
it, it leaves a little bit to be desired, let's put it that way, which is, you know, that being said, like overall, I, I do think Stanford gives you like a world-class education that is like not accessible, uh, you know, not accessible to a lot of people, which is unfortunate. But I did just spend like, you know, 20 minutes bashing Stanford. That being said, like, I know I'm really lucky to go to Stanford. And I, you know, I did enjoy a lot of classes. Um, I just wish they were perhaps better taught or just more stimulating. That being said, like I said, I know... The classes I like if I went to a different college, I would probably have even bigger complaints. So Stanford was, you know, it's it's a great school. Don't get me wrong. I'm just giving the suggestions about how I think it could be better.